Master. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. Holy fuck! She's already half HP. She's dead. <laughs> Rune binder. We can stack two on the boss now. We summon them so fast! Look at that damage! He's dead. Oh, he, he teleported. Okay, now he's dead. It's so fast. Hell yeah. I'm looking forward to this Herald of Purity build too. I'm glad you like it, man. Thanks so much. Yo, he's already phased. Next. <laughs> he's already dead. <laughs> We're on to the third phase. He's alive for a second. One, two, three. Only got three. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Holy shit, the damage. Wait, he's gonna die on this. He's gonna die, he's gonna die. Yes! Woo! He died so fucking quickly. Holy shit! He didn't do anything! That's. I haven't done this in a while. Oh my god. What? Wait, can we kill him really fast? Like, really fast? Oh my god! He instant phased! I want to show, showcase what the clear looks like, so I'm going to run this uh, Maze of the Minotaur. We're going to kill the boss. It's also, we have the Shaper thing where it spawns the extra Shaper boss. Uh, so mod shown. This is basically to show like what the build looks like um, in, in clearing versus our 3.11 carry on golem thing that we ran before. I'm just going to leave the map. Uh, this is just a showcase, so it's not about the loot. And uh, so you just Stormbrand when you see a rare monster, and that gets you your uh, Herald of Purities. So you can just run through, you can Flame Dash when you want to. Uh, you can also do a trick where you do um, Stormbrand and then Dash, and uh, that actually works. And as you can see, I saw two rares, I Stormbranded on them and kept going, and everything's dying. Uh, you don't have to worry. And uh, it's pretty sick clear. You know that because it's doing 46 million damage, you pretty much one-shot absolutely everything in the maps. Uh, so that part's really fun. And then it's just about the boss DPS after. Uh, and so I'll be showcasing that in just a sec. And uh, we'll see which extra guardian I spawn. So we'll start with the minnow. We're already summoning them. Two, three. He already got phased. And he's dead. And the other one. And he's dead. Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Ultimatum League 3.14. In this episode, we're going to be doing a build guide for the Herald of Purity build that I showcased the gameplay of with the 46 mil DPS. I started this video off with some gameplay, probably on Awaken or 9, the Maven, and uh, some clear speed. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and now let's get into the actual nitty gritty, the guide, so people can play this at home. It's very in-depth, and I hope you guys guys appreciate and enjoy this uh so to start it off i started with a sim similar format to what we did back in 3.11 for the carry on golems uh when i did my afk carry on golem elementalist back in harvest league so to start it off uh to summon herald of purities i have to storm brand a rare or unique enemy or get the kill with the storm brand which we use um we get help from the culling strike from my animate weapon uh animate guardians kingmaker kingmaker gives culling strike to nearby allies uh, and then once we have at least one Herald of Purity, the clear is absolutely insane because they just one-shot everything. Uh, it deals like 11.6 million and it can multi-strike. Uh, if it's insta-killing bosses, imagine regular trash mobs and maps. Uh, as we saw in the 100 Deli from my gameplay video, if you didn't see that, it was episode 820 uh, is my gameplay video. I did 100 Deli as well, and then you could see that my clear was insane and we pretty much insta-killed the... Minotaur and that Hydra, uh, but there's less mobility than the carry on golems, but we do more damage and it's better than the zombies and stone golems It's also more damage than carry on golems, but less mobility uh, In the single target. It is a boss Destroyer the best boss killer. I've ever played this absolutely Obliterates bosses highly recommend very easy to summon for held of purity with Stormbrand and rune binder on bosses Better single target than stone golems carry on golems and zombies 
survivability and hardcore viability. This exact version is not super tanky and not very hardcore viable, but with this absurd amount of damage, it would be very easy to fit in a tank package that helps survivability, sacrificing a bit of damage. I think you could afford to lose some damage if your goal was surviving and doing hardcore. This seems very strong, so you could do like Zabakwa, uh, with uh, raising your chaos res to 90, technically they're they're maybe aura stacking. Uh, there there's like get getting more life just actually helps a lot. Uh, so if you sacrifice some damage and went for more life, um, yep, life on the helmet. Uh, expense league starter and SSF viability. This current version is pretty expensive and recommended for trade league 100 to 200 x. As a league starter summoner with no items, episode 800 for my league starter. Um, decently smooth league start, and we scale into buying cold iron points, the synthesis, circle of guilt rings, and the helm enchant for herald of purity, reduce mana. Those are the three things I recommend to look for at the beginning of a league. Uh, cold iron points can be somewhat expensive early, but they're extremely powerful. Uh, the syn synthesis, circle of guilt rings, uh, you have to do synthesis maps for that. So that's like T14 plus, uh, might be a little bit expensive at the beginning. And then the helm enchant for herald of purity, reduce mana reservation might be cheap because people don't gener genuine, generally, uh, start herald of purity. So maybe, well, I'm probably going to raise the price with this video, which is unfortunate, but it would have been cheaper if I wasn't a YouTuber streamer. SSF viability. It might be a little difficult to get these specific items, but it definitely seems possible. You can use Zana missions to get Zana maps, uh, to get synthesis maps, or you can use the Uncharted Realm Atlas passives to increase synthesis map drops from map bosses on tier 14 to 16. You can run Harvest to upgrade Offering to the Goddess to Gift to the Goddess to get 7 enchants uh, from this harder lab. And you can also use Twice Enchanted the Prophecy to hit the Herald of Purity Mana Reserve because uh, more enchants. Uh, the build is playable without the helm enchant and rings, but then you would have to make up the mana reserve with uh, Discord Artesian on the skill tree, which gives 20% reduced reservation of herald skills, and you wouldn't be able to run as many auras. But it's very possible to be able to play this without these mana reserve items. So then it's just cold iron points and the mana reserve. Path of building. So... Uh, very quickly, you could search the game report, and I recommend Path of Building Community to have the impale calculations, and it's actually supported. I think uh, POB isn't updated anymore, and you can use this paste bin. Um, so we're going to actually copy the link, and then I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So this is a fresh Path of Building Community, and I'm going to import the link, and you'll see you get this. So it shows you my whole build. It has all the stuff already enabled for you. Uh, so the minions on full life, created recently, power frenzy charges, the killed recently, minions killed recently, the minion skill recently, feeding frenzy, 10 carry on golem minions, max for pride, mim, intimidate, and then Cyrus. Uh, and this is my skill tree. So this build, we use two large clusters. We use rune binder. We got the spiritual aid to make the minion damage scale us. Uh, we have all the minion res on the skill tree, so the sacrifice, grave intentions, and dom army. We have life, 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 uh, AoE for the Herald of Purity Slam. Here's life and chaos res. Mana reserve. Uh, this is the discord artesian that I was talking about. So if you take 10, 5, 5, this is 20% reduced reservation of the Herald. I can show you. Look at my mana reserve, 5%. 19% so you can actually use this it's a real thing and it's and it's right where we already are because we in this build we run a golem commander and an anima stone so that we can run uh, a stone golem carry on golem and chaos golem and then the main reason I did this was because I didn't have endurance charges on the ring so I wanted to get 8% physical damage reduction from the chaos golem to make up for the two endurance charges we're missing um, and then I wanted the life regen from the stone golem because it's actually pretty good. We have 672 and get 300 just from this stone golem. And then we have the increased effect of the carry on golem, which gives us damage. It's not a lot, but when you run all three and then carry on golems really good with feeding frenzy and mim to apply these buffs because feeding frenzy is this big damage and mim is this big damage. You get both of them together off just your golems pog champ. If we didn't run the golems, then um, it's pretty awkward because how do you fit all of these links on the anime guardian inspector? It's pretty weird. Okay, so that's that's my skill tree, and I do the large clusters where I do 
uh, Ron and Claw's Renewal Vicious, but I'll be going into more detail of all the specific items and everything after, so that's why I'm not going through them that much. I'll go through the skills, because this I don't go through in another section of the of the video. So, I run in my gloves, Skitterbots, Awakened Unbound Ailments. This works to increase the effect of the shock and the chill on the Skitterbots. I do 2120 dr Dread Banner with Awakened Generosity 520. In my weapon, I do a Desecrate Flesh Offering Convoca con Convocation. Uh, so this is in the in the wand that automatically has trigger. So trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill with an 8 second cooldown. So when you activate flame dash, storm brand, default attack, um, bone armor, the, it will trigger desecrate flesh offering convocation in this order. Have desecrate before flesh offering to make the corpses before you explode them in the helmet with the plus 3 minion life. That's the main priority, minion life. And then you can get the extra plus levels. I go through that later. Animate guardian. 2120. I do Divergent for the extra life. Life tap on the Spectre so it uses life instead of mana because it doesn't have good mana regen and it, you want it to use um, its Frenzy and Power Charges ability very often. I'll have a, a section on Spectres later. And then the Chaos Golem because it's one of the squishiest ones and I wanted the extra levels to keep them alive and the extra minion life. Uh, so I put them in the helmet. The second weapon is Pride Flame Dash Stormbrand. The Stormbrand is to... Uh, get the two with the rune binder so that you can stack the Herald of Purity because Herald of Purity needs to hit an, a rare or unique enemy 20% chance to summon a Sentinel of Purity or when you kill an enemy. So we use Stormbrand to kill or to trigger the summoning of Herald of Purity on bosses or rares. Um, and then we have our four link boot, Stone Golem, Mayhem, Carry On Golem, Feeding Frenzy, big damage buffs, and then Life Regen. And then uh, this is my setup, so two Convoking Wands is actually cheaper than those Scepters I showed before. Uh, the Helmet, I do the Enchant for the Herald of Purity Reduced Mana Reservation, and then I did an Elder Bone Helmet with Minion Life and plus three. You don't need the plus three, but obviously the more levels on these minions in your helmet, the better they will survive, which is nice, keeping the Spectres alive and stuff. Um, and then Minion Damage is extra, extra overall damage, 20 Minion Damage overall. Um... And then the chest plate, we do the plus one active skill gems, plus one strength skill gems. And I ate, I Ashling slammed minion life, I mean, uh, max life, percent max life, and I crafted avoid ailments. You can craft this. I show, I will go through a section on how to craft the chest plate after, but basically it's a four socket resonator with uh, corroded, faceted, dense, pristine. And that gets you a one and two, uh, two tries, and you'll get this chest plate without the intelligence. It's a it's six tries to get the plus one intelligence. You don't really need it, because uh, that was for phantasms. And then glove is just life, fire res, chaos res. I'm gonna go through all the items in a section later. So, yep, and I'll go through the flask in a separate section. This was the pob, and uh, yeah, 11.5 million DPS per, and there's four of them. Next, uh, let's go back to the boom ascendancy. We do the Necromancer, and we start with Mindless Aggression. That's the one in the middle. Then we do Unnatural Strength, then Bone Barrier, and then Commander of Darkness. Pantheons, I use Solaris, and then Grethkel. I recommend Solaris, and the main reason is for bossing, but also you have this one from the Erythrophagia. And it's take no extra damage from critical strikes if you have taken a crit strike recently. So basically I realized that anything that hits you more than once. So let's say uh, a good example is the Awakener, Die Beam. He does triple beams. And so if the first beam crits you, this makes it so the other two do not. Well, they can crit you, but they don't do any extra damage. Uh, this is completely bonkers and, and stop shotgunning and what's actually going to kill you is multiple hits usually unless you, you like as long as you're um, you, like not going to die to one hit. And then I use Grothkull for the extra physical damage reduction and the attack speed slow. But when I do Blight, I switch to Abrath. This build's not very good for AFK Blight. As you can imagine, you have to cast Stormbrand so it doesn't really work. But I left this in here as a nice like, yo, if you do Blight, Burning Ground is uh, really aids. Okay. Then movement and utility, I do flame dash, instant long range dash and multiple charges. I love flame dash, pog jump. Auras, 2020 pride, you can do a 2120, 2123, whatever. 2120 dread banner, you can do a 2123. 520 awakened generosity, you can do a 620. Uh, summon skitterbots, you could do 2120, and you can also do a 
Is it divergent? God damn it. I'll look it up really, really quick. Uh, skitter bots. And then with awakened unbound ailments. But basically there's another alt quality version of skitter bots that has increased effect of non-damaging ailments on divergent. So you could go divergent skitter bots if you can afford it. Um, and then a 2120 divergent herald of purity gives you reduced cooldown um, of the of the purities. I'll show you. So summon sentinels have 20% increased cooldown recovery rate. This lowers the cooldown of the crusade slam from 6 to 5. That's actually completely massive. And then keybinds, I do bone armor left click, flame dash E, walk on right click, storm brand is W, middle mouse button, and T. Easy clap. And then auras, I do control Q, W, and R to toggle them easily if I die. Uh, and you actually need control T as well for the herald of purity, but I forgot. Mapping strategy. Look for rare or unique to summon first Herald of Purity. Run around for League Mechanics and Map Boss, Flame Dash for extra speed, Bone Armor, Flame Dash, Storm Brand to trigger the wand spells such as Desecrate, Flesh Offering, Convocation. If you can cap the resistances without the stage and Vice, you can replace it with a Headhunter to get the movement speed and extra damage. Headhunter is not required though, obviously, but it's pretty nice. Bossing strategy. Run around in a circle. No, but seriously, all you gotta do is put two storm brands on the boss because of your rune binder, and then the Herald of Purity spawn and instantly kill the boss while you get to run around. We can dodge mechanics and move around while dealing top DPS. Pug champ. Leveling tree G gear gems. So uh, in the past, I would go over this in every single guide, but to be honest, episode 800 is my great league starter, and I highly recommend it. And here's even the the link to the video in this um in my slides so you could type this if you want in the search bar if you don't if you can't find the episode 800 for some weird reason i don't know uh relevant map modifiers physical reflect poop don't run that elemental reflect oh no we could kill ourselves with Stormbrand. brand s less recovery is really annoying but it's possible cannot regenerate life or mana is really annoying but you could run a mana flask i guess and you you have a life flask so it's possible um the gear and price disclaimer 100 to 200 x yep pretty expensive uh can could be cheaper but this is just what i put together as a cool way to show the build at a very high end game point uh how to craft the body armor so i told you i would tell you how to do it i even have a clip so if you want to i'll leave a link to the clip in the description below and then it's how to get plus one active skill gems and plus one socketed strength gems. Most people don't know how to get socketed strength gems because it requires a faceted fossil. And so recommended six link item level 80 plus warlord or shaper body armor. Warlord or shaper can hit plus one active skill gems. But I recommend warlord because they're usually cheap. That's just what I found. I don't know why. Uh, maybe people like Shaper better or don't know about Warlord or are doing Shaper for a different reason so it's more expensive, more uh, popular. And then the 4 socket resonator is a faceted, corroded, dense, pristine. And it's an average of 2 tries to get this. 6 tries to get plus 1 socketed intelligence on top of this. But you don't need the socketed intelligence. That was for my phantasms to get the phantasms to level 21 so I could get an extra phantasm. You don't need to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll leave a link to the clip in the descri description below. Priority items. So these would be like the items that your main priorities are for this build to play it if you were trying to make this yourself right now. Helm Enchant with 30% reduced mana reservation of Herald of Purity is huge because the Herald of Purity is in a 6 link and its mana reserve increases with most of the supports except Empower. I got my Herald of Purity all the way down to 14% mana reserve from, from 100 it's insane. Uh, two circles of guilt synthesis rings with 20% reduced reservation of Herald of Purity. So that's how I did it. The 30 plus the 20 is already 70%, not counting my charisma and the sovereignty and the extra 4% next to sovereignty. Um, two cluster jewels with two rotting claws to get the extra 24% impale chance. We only had 77 with the Impale support and Dread Banner with Awakened Generosity. So to get the 100% uh, Impale, it was two Cluster Jewels with two Rotting Claws. Because we did, aren't going a chest plate with Aura Effect, and we don't go a Helm Enchant with Dread Banner Effect. Um, so y you don't get the extra missing without the extra Rotting Claws. Um, and then we have a plus two Amulet, so plus one Physical Skill Gems, plus one Strength Skill Gems. 
uh, the plus two body armor as shown here. Uh, the plus two convoking wands, which is plus one minion skill gems, plus one spell skill gems. I have a video on how to craft the plus two wands. It's another four socket resonator. It's not that much. It, it Right now, these are like three or four X to buy a convoking wand like that. Or, or instead, you could use cooldown points, but be warned that your specter will be squishier. Uh, it is an option, though, and you actually get two more levels, but it's less damage than convoking wands crafted up. Uh, Elder Helmet with minion life and maybe some extra levels for socketed minion gems uh, to help survivability of specters and animate guardian, but mainly just socketed gems are supported by minion life. Oh yeah, so now I'm going to talk about each piece of uh, gear in my build and uh, more specific about them. So yeah, you can run the plus two wands like I said. Um, and then this one, I have uh, open suffixes. So you could use the harvest craft to reroll keeping prefix. Um, or you could use the the normal craft on the bench to keep prefix, and then you could scour and multi. Um, the can can have up to three crafted modifiers. You can craft trigger, which you get from June unveils, and then minion attack speed fifteen percent. And then on this one, I had an open prefix, so I multied and crafted minion damage, and then minion attack speed. You only need one trigger wand. Uh, the helmet. I'm doing the herald of purity. Reduce reservation. I did an elder bone helmet item level 86. The 86 is so you can hit the plus 3 to socketed minion gems. If you don't do this, you could do an 83 for minion damage 20. Or you could do a uh, item level 80 elder bone helmet for hitting minion life 20. So you only need 86 if you want to go for the plus 3 minion gems. Uh, you only need 83 if you want to go for the level 20 minion damage, and you only need 80 if you want to go for minion life 20. So technically, you only need 80 in this build to get the minion life 20. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and then I crafted Avoid Ailments, and this also had Res's Cold and Lightning, which help a lot in this build, because we're kind of resistant starved. Um, yeah, so I get 25 Avoid Ailments from there. Uh, then the chest plate, I told you it's the plus 2 that I crafted. Um, and then we Ashling slammed uh, increased max life. So this is an item. Uh, this is a Warlord Astral Plate. I highly recommend an Astral Plate. Uh, and then you can, when you do my four socket resonator crafting trick, you will always have an open prefix. And there is a chance you have two open prefixes. So if you have two open prefixes, you can Ashling slam, which is the four star Ashling from June. Uh, with killing your mastermind to get her four star to be able to slam on a veil mod and then you could craft on an extra mod after you reveal the veil so if you reveal avoid ailments then you can craft on percent life or flat life and if you unveil uh, percent life then you can craft on avoid ailments and then for the glove I did this doesn't need to be a hunter glove so I just did life res res open suffix to craft avoid ailments uh, so you can see that we're getting avoid ailments, avoid ailments, avoid ailments. Uh, and then I did a boot shaper. This one was specifically shaper so that I could get avoid ailments. And then I went for life and move speed and open suffix to craft a res and chaos res. I like these hybrid crafts for chaos res. It's really nice because you can't craft chaos res on gear except for this hybrid craft. So that's why I like it so much. And then I did, um... Uh, Citrin Ami, and this is an Awakener Orb Ami with physical skill gems and strength skill gems of Warlord Hunter, Warlord for the physical, and Hunter for the strength, and then I multied Life and Lightning and Chaos, so it had an open prefix. On the Circles of Guilt, you can get cool implicits like Percent Max Life, but it's more expensive, um, and then you're looking for getting your Herald of, Herald of, Herald of Purity to 20% reduced reservation, increased life uh catalyst does not increase the effect of the reservation this one actually has the increased life catalyst increased life and mana catalyst and it doesn't increase the herald of purity reservation so don't try to do that uh, it's a waste of your of your catalyst and it costs one x to buy 20 of those um catalysts yeah and then i anointed scout towers have 25 percent increased range for my blight and this is an opal, uh, a violet and a teal. On the Ami, it's Charisma for 8% reduced mana reservation. And this is two gold and an opalescent. On the Stygem Vice, I went for life and reses, open suffix. Uh, again, just, just to cap my reses because 
you're kind of res starved because you have to wear unique rings. You're going for the plus two light, uh, chest plate, plus two ammy. You're going for uh, minion stuff helmet, and you're going for the plus two wands. You don't really have much room. And so I went for a res belt, which is why it's hard to replace this with a headhunter. Um, and then I, I go into specific the jewels and all this other stuff after. So I'll go through that in a separate section. But this was just for the main items. I hope, uh, I hope that helps. Next section, cluster jewels. So I do two large cluster jewels because the main reason I need the rotting claws to get the 100% impale. You run two of them to go from the 77 to 100%. And then I like to run renewal and then vicious bite. I highly recommend all three of the mods, but if you have to go budget, it'd be rotting claws renewal probably for cheaper. Uh, yeah, and then 8 passive as recommended because you only spend 7 points to take the whole thing. That's my cluster jewel. Primordial jewels. We run 1 anima stone. It's, uh, so you can get an extra golem. And there's a vendor recipe available. So if you do uncorrupted, no replica version, 1 primordial my 1 primordial harmony, 1 primordial eminence, you can sell these to the vendor and you get an anima stone. There's also... Uh, a div card at Zirian's reward. At Zirian's reward, um, this also gives you a corrupted prismatic jewel, which is guaranteed to be an anima stone. So you could go for these. I've shown this twice now. Um, it's a secret tip. Okay, highly recommend at Zirian's reward. Uh, so you can get corrupted. Whoops, you can get corrupted anima stones for cheaper than normal. And you can usually get like a corrupted blood anima stone or a 1% reduced mana reservation anima stone cheaper than the other jewels because it can come from this div card already corrupted. Uh, so there's tons of them in the market than normal, more than normal. Because it's not just the vendor recipe, it's also that div card. There's also some other cards that can give it to. Um, next. We run Golem, Commander, and Anima Stone. So we have three Golems, Stone Golem, Carry-On Golem, Chaos Golem. I wanted the Carry-On Golem for the extra damage and a way to trigger Feeding Frenzy and Mim. I wanted Stone Golem for Regen in this build. And I and since I lose two minimum Endurance Charges while using these Circle of Guilt Rings, I wanted 8% extra Physical Damage Reduction from the Chaos Golem. It's sick. Abyss Jewels. This is really cool. Uh, this will help a lot of people because uh, I know. This breaks down Abyss Jewels into a very easy way to understand them. So pretty much, prefixes. I like 20 to 40 life. Higher is better. Minions deal number to number additional physical damage. Higher is better. This mod does less damage than 20% minion damage or 6 to 8% minion attack speed because high level minions means high base damage. What they don't tell us, what they don't show us in game is that as you level up your minions, they get ridiculous base damage. So you don't need to add flat physical damage to them, or it's just not as good. And we would rather scale up their base numbers with minion damage or minion attack speed. So I don't recommend the minion uh, physical damage that much, and it's more of an extra mod. If you already have everything else and this is for free, and you're like, why is this so cheap? I don't understand. Buy it. Because it's just extra, but it's not better than these. So the higher priority is life with minion damage or life with minion attack speed. That's what I would recommend. And now I'll go through the suffixes. Minion d deals increased damage, uh, 16 to 20, if you've used a minion skill recently. This is basically the best damage mod. And then second best is this minion attack speed or cast speed if they've killed recently. Um, the, the problem is they have to kill recently, so bosses, this doesn't work. Um, and that's why the minion skill recently is better and also minion damage instead of attack speed is slightly better because of cooldown issues well then they won't be attacking too fast for the case of like the slams for multi-strike you'd rather them just do more damage than finish their slams faster there's no reason to slam faster basically because you, you're not lowering the cooldown that much um, and then one source of minions have chance to taunt on hit with attacks Unless you think the stone golem taunting is enough, uh, that's fine. And then one source of minions have chance to blind on hit with attacks for blind. Uh, you can also you also have the blind from your animate guardian, which I'll go into more detail later. I have an animate guardian section. Extra possible suffixes include your resistances, so suffixes, attributes, strength, dex, um, or even minion chaos resistance, pog champ, 
because your minions aren't chaos res capped in this build technically but they're good enough with what they have 61 chaos by the way uh that's yours and then the minion uh 58 next mtx so i don't actually own an mtx for held of purity but there's like 12 of them and celestial hero the purity is already out and look how fucking cool it looks and it's actually on sale right now <laughs> uh flas let's go through that we run this Forbidden Taste, which is better if you have your Chaos Res capped, but to be honest, this doesn't do a lot of damage to you. Um, the degen is not, th not that much, 170, that's with 61 Chaos. So obviously you should cap your Chaos Res if you're going to use a Forbidden Taste, but it's fine. You can roll this so that it recovers full life on use, and uh, you may have seen with the gameplay clips, I... Love this flask. It's really powerful. Highly recommend Forbidden Taste. It's even phasing, and it's a good source of phasing. We run two Quartz Flasks in the build, because I, I save the Forbidden Taste for the heal, not for the phasing, but the phasing's a bonus. Basalt Flask with uh, reduced charges and Curse Immune. Rumi's Concoction. Obviously, you could roll this for higher. Uh, 20 attack and 10 spell block. Uh, and then we run a Quartz Flask with Curse Immune and reduced charges. Uh, some people will be like, why two Curse? Uh, because we're already elemental ailment immune, and I don't care about the bleed, so then I just want to make sure I'm curse immune, because it's really AIDS. And then Quicksilver, move speed, and reduce charges, uh, fast as fuck boys. Here we go, back to the build. Spectres, uh, two Carnage Chieftains for frenzy charges, linked to life tap, so they use life instead of mana, because they don't have good mana regeneration, but they have great life regeneration. They get to spam their ability. Found in Old Fields Act 2 and also Ashen Fields Act 7. One Host Chieftain for power charges linked to life tap, same thing, but it's power charges. Um, and these are found in Ashen Fields Act 7, not Act 2 Old Fields. So you can actually see a difference where you can get your Carnage Chieftains very early. At level 28, you could put them in the build while leveling, but you don't you don't get your Host Chieftain until Act 7. Ooh, interesting. And then uh, you get three Spectres from the level 25 Spectre Gem. So in the beginning, you would just use two Carnage Chieftains while you're leveling, because you don't have your level 25 Spectre Gem while you're at Act 7 and Act 2. Um, if you decide to take Death at two men for the extra Spectre, I didn't in this case, uh, you, you would run another Host Chieftain, so two Carnage Chieftain, two Host Chieftain, and it's for more consistent power charge stacking, because one won't, uh, be consistent while the mon while your minions are running around, and because the Host Chieftain is not a full screen buff, it's only around the Host Chieftain, so having two of them can help cover more area. Animate Guardian. This is very important. Pay attention, guys. Indeed. What you need. 70 of each cold, fire, and lightning resistance spread across these items, not including the Kingmaker. So I put the main items with the main mods down here. This is just the main stuff you're looking for, but this is what you have to cover. You need this. This is what you want. This is what you need. Okay. 70 of each res. And then 55 Chaos Res. This is to make sure your Animate Guardian has its resistance capped and Chaos Res without the skill tree. And then the cold, like having the extra elemental res is to make it safe to elemental weakness. The curse. Then I go for as much life as possible on each piece of gear. Usually it's easy to get a boot with 30 move speed with extra resistance or life. And then you have an open prefix or suffix so you can craft one of the things you're missing. So for an example move speed life a resistance and you could craft another resistance like the hybrid craft of lightning and chaos or fire and chaos or you could leave open the life prefix and you get two resistances so let's say move speed with chaos and fire and then you could craft life 70. Um, that's an option to save you some money so you have different alternatives to look for I also like to craft the hybrid 13 to 15 elemental res and chaos res that's just what I was explaining with the lightning and chaos you can craft on the glove. You can't craft on the glove, so just get as much life and resistance with the corruption as possible. So we're looking for a corrupted glove with cursed enemies with vulnerability on hit with increased effect. Uh, so then you're going to be looking for life and, and whatever resistances you can get. And I will do this first so that you know what you already have so you don't overcap the res in one of these categories because it's hard to do it. So you want to make sure you just perfectly cap your AG because... You don't want to waste stats, basically. Um, 
And then you can look for a helmet and body armor with either resistance or life and craft the other one that's missing. But make sure to get these main mods. So the chest, uh, the helmet is an item level 85 elder helmet with nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage. This is pretty expensive. So usually you get like life and then maybe you craft on it and maybe you'll get one extra resistance. Uh, that's gen generally what I do. Or you could maybe get, it's hard to get a chaos res version. So you usually craft chaos res on the helmet. And for the body armor, similar, uh, nearby enemies are blinded on an item level 75 plus redeemer body armor. Does not need to be a six link. And then you could craft on extra resistance. You could find this with life. Uh, it's probably going to be easier to find this with life than it is to find it with chaos res. You could craft chaos res on it. Um, so you'll notice that it's hard to get chaos on the, on the corrupted glove. Hard to get chaos on the body armor. Hard to get chaos on the helmet. So you could get chaos on the boot. And, or you could hybrid craft the elemental resistance and chaos res on these items. Except for the curse glove. Um, so then you could look for a different resistance on the curse glove to help with your 70%. Uh, the, these will hopefully will help a lot for people trying to gear up their AG and will save a lot of money and will probably increase the overall price of the way I do it, but it's fine. Um, so then the last thing, instead of the nearby enemies are blinded, you could go for a garb of the ephemeral for nearby enemies cannot crit. That's fine. And that's the entire guide. Oh my God. This was insane. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed so I've went over everything, went over the ghastly jewels, went over the clusters, the primordial jewels, the flasks, all the items, all the skill tree, the leveling. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to make. A lot of people were really excited for a guide. So I hope this uh, met up to your expectations. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And now I'm going to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon and my YouTube members who financially support the channel. I can't do this without you guys. So thank you guys for all the support. And thank you to anyone new who joins the Patreon and the YouTube members today. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!